Hi, I'm Ben Hedges, and welcome to Discovering China. On this week's show, we take a look at the highlights of Asian Art Week at Christie's in New York, and head judge Jiang Kunlun talks about NTD Television's Chinese figure painting competition. This week was Asian Art Week at Christie's Auction House in New York. Chinese works on offer dated from 3,000 years ago to the early 20th century. Now, Margaret Tri features three interesting highlights made of three different materials – porcelain, bronze and glass. These artifacts may have already changed hands at auction. A stunning yellow vest sets the theme for the 2013 Asian Art Week at Christie's New York. This is a really wonderful piece. It's one of only two known. And uh, this piece comes from the Springfield Art Museum. Michael Bess is the co-head of the Chinese Ceramics and Works of Art Department. He talks about its unique qualities. It dates, this base dates to the Qianlong period. We know this because um, on the base of it, it's um, inscribed with the mark of the Qianlong Emperor in seal script. This one just shows a very rare combination of yellow glaze, which of course yellow is the color of uh, the imperial color. And, uh, but it's combined here with underglaze blue cobalt decoration. So a very rare combination, um, probably very difficult to achieve since it wasn't utilized very often. But they further decorated the yellow glazed area with incised designs of dragons. Uh, so you have a front-faced dragon kind of confronting this flaming pearl right here. And over here is a side-facing side uh, dragon striding and looking up at the flaming pearl. The vase is expected to fetch more than its estimated value of 500,000 US dollars. It is part of the fine Chinese ceramics and works of art collection on offer during the Spring Asian Art Week. We have uh, four sales and five catalogs. Uh, so we have the, you walked by through the lobby gallery, the Lozadro collection of uh, car, fine, finely carved jades and works of art. Uh, then we'll be moving into our private owner, single owner sale of uh, snuff bottles, the Schoenfeld collection, and then we have our parts one and two of Chinese works of art. This bronze wine container is also expected to be popular with buyers. Bronze vessel, which is called a Fang Yi. It dates to the late Shang Dynasty, 12th, 11th century BC. This was uh, one of the vessel shapes that was used by the aristocracy in um, worship to the ancestor, so they would make offerings of food and wine. And this is a, a wine vessel to contain wine. And uh, it's in the, it dates to the, the period when uh, the Shang capital was in Anyang, and they, it's considered like the high point of Shang casting. Bronze was the most precious metal of the period. Bronze was a commodity of the elite, um, the royalty, that would use them for uh, ritual sacrifices. The vessel is estimated to fetch between 800000 and $1.2 million. Bess says this is a reasonable price. You know, this is one of the elite vessel shapes, so the proportions of the pieces are just very, very elegant, very strong. Um, it has beautiful size, a very interesting shape, very fine casting with these mysterious uh, masks on there. Uh, you can see this mask with the two eyes, the horns. Um, it's like the, it's the upper jaw and then the, the horns of that mask. And it's perhaps a, it's called a Tiao Tian mask, which um, is thought to ward off evil. Another highlight is this glass vase. It's really an exceptionally rare uh, vase. Um, we know that this vase dates to the Qianlong period um, because it's inscribed on the base with the mark of the Qianlong Emperor. It shows what top artisans could do during that period. So this, this piece was um, made at the Imperial Glass Works um, and it, was a very, it shows a very difficult uh, technique of creating such a piece. You would have to blow the vase and then you would have to apply uh, colors in located areas and then carve around, around it to pr produce this design in a cameo-like effect. And so um, very difficult, very, um, it, you know, you couldn't make any mistakes with this kind of material. Bass explains the significance in the use of motifs. This piece is carved with uh, archaistic dragons and uh, scrolling dragons along here. And again, um, archaistic designs herald the past and the Qing emperors would 
kind of refer to such pieces to kind of legitimize their association with the ruling, with ruling China because they were actually Manchurian and not Han Chinese. So you see a lot of archaistic decoration at this time. The cell also includes Chinese jade pieces and a collection of Qing Dynasty snuff bottles. Christie's is the world's leading art business, with total sales in 2011 amounting to almost six billion US dollars. We now speak with Zhang Kun Lun, head judge for NTD Television's Chinese figure painting competition. The competition stresses a return to classical techniques. Zhang explains what the judges are looking for. Traditional, realist painting is a significant part of Western culture, but has also attracted accomplished Chinese artists. The art of traditional painting actually originated from the Western world. This form of painting has been very well developed as it has a complete set of theories and school training. It is very complete, systematic and professional. Therefore, this painting art is like a very precious treasure in the treasure trove of world culture. This year, NTD Television will hold its fourth international Chinese figure painting competition with the goal of bringing traditional culture once again to the forefront in the modern world. In China nowadays, after the disaster in which most of the traditional Chinese culture was destroyed by the Communist Party, so many Chinese people don't actually know how glorious our Chinese civilization once was and how extensive and profound the Chinese culture is. With this in mind, we decided to use this best art technique in the Western world to demonstrate the profound Chinese culture. This is our goal. Also, we want to create a good connection between the Chinese culture and Western culture. Head judge Zhang Kun Lun says traditional art brings great benefit to all of humankind. Traditional painting art emphasizes the importance of the contents and forms that can express the truth, beauty and virtue, things that will be good to humankind. In terms of the content, it has to be positive and bright, which will be good for people's physical and mental health. In contrast, Zhang says modern art comes from the negative aspects of people's character. In addition, nowadays under the influence of a society full of unhealthy ways and customs, people have strong pursuits of self-fame and wealth. These impure thoughts have also been brought into the artwork. Modern artwork, from Impressionism to Abstractionism, is in lack of logics and very confused due to people's variable thoughts. In the competition, there are several specific things that the judges are looking for. We have several criteria. First, it's the concept whether they have good content. This is very important as our artwork has to consider the responsibility for the audience and our society. Secondly, it has to use the traditional realist style, and this is the pure and nice way that God's introduced to humankind. We have to restore this traditional method. Zhang Kun Lun hopes that professional painters will join his mission and sign up for the 2013 competition. The contest will be held in full. Contestants have until July 10, 2013 to sign up. Well, thank you for watching Discovering China. We'll be back next week, but until then, don't forget to subscribe to our show on YouTube and like us on Facebook. Bye for now.